Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, an example of an oscillating system consisting of two masses and two springs. These are all translating springs, spring one and spring two, right? K1 and K2. Those are the, uh, the, sniff, the stiffness or the springs modulus. Uh, what we have here is a bar BAC, like a bracket, who, which has a negligible mass, okay? And then we have uh, mass one connected with these uh, rods, uh, with the ro this rod in red, and then also mass two is connected to the point C with another rod. Uh, and our objective here is to find the equivalent mass and equivalent spring and eventually determine the natural frequency of the system, omega n, okay? So we wanna find equivalent spring, equivalent mass, and the natural frequency. Basically, what I want to do is to say that this system is equivalent, and remember that everything we want to write is in terms of y. In other words, eventually we want to have a differential equation of mass equivalent y double dot plus k equivalent y equals zero, where the system that we are looking for is just a translating mass, we call it mass equivalent, attached and to an equivalent spring and moving with position y. So how do we go about doing this? It's really simple, guys. The best way to find equivalent spring and equivalent mass is to use energy method. And the way we use energy method is for equivalent spring, we use the uh, potential energy. And for equivalent mass, we use kinetic energy. First of all, before we do that, let me just show you that uh, you could see that as y goes up, this bar will, obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit, will rotate like that. So if this is y, I'm gonna call this x, and I'm gonna establish between the relation between x and y. y would be how much mass one is moving up, and as a result, that's how much spring one is gonna be deformed. And similarly, X would be how much mass two moves to the left and how much spring two is going to deform. So it's obviously it's important for me to find uh, the relation between them because everything is gonna be in terms of, as I said, in terms of uh, Y. So my differential equation is gonna be like that. So uh, let me call this angle theta, right? And this angle theta right, would be the same angle. So you could clearly see uh, that if you say tangent theta is y over, and I erase that, 10 inch here, this was 10 inch, or 10 centimeters, by the way, the unit is not important. This is just a ratio. But at the same time, tangent theta in this triangle here, guys, is x over five. Therefore, y over 10 is x over five which implies that x is gonna be half of y. And that's very important to us. So let me show you how we go ahead and first use potential energy to find equivalent spring. And then we use potential uh, kinetic energy rather to find uh, equivalent mass. So potential energy, basically you wanna find potential energy of each spring here uh, and the way you do that is by saying okay the potential energy of a spring one is one half k1 how much spring one is going to deform by, uh, by y so it would be y squared remember potential energy usually denoted by u is one half k deformation squared right delta squared Similarly, for spring number two, is one half K2. Remember, spring number two is gonna be deformed by X. So it would be X squared equal to your equivalent system. One half K equivalent, meaning that potential energy of your equivalent system, which would be K equivalent Y squared. Remember, this is spring, the K equivalent is gonna be deformed by Y. So first of all, the one half is gonna get canceled. Therefore, if you leave y alone and replace x by half of y here 
after you do some calculation here, see, see one half is squared here becomes one fourth or k, k two over four factor y squared equal k equivalent y squared and now I'm running out of space here guys so I'm going to move to the next page so remember we ha I have k1 plus k2 over 4 y squared equal k equivalent y squared therefore this must be the k equivalent so k equivalent becomes k1 plus k2 over 4 in a minute I'm going to come back and plug in some numbers and we can actually calculate the natural frequency. All right, back to original page, the first page. How about finding equivalent mass? This time we're gonna use kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of this mass is what? Kinetic energy of a translating mass is one half mv squared. Velocity of this guy is what? Rate of change of y squared. And what about this guy? So see that this is one half m1, y dot squared, and this one is one half m2, what? X dot squared, right? Because that's the displacement of mass number two. And then you s the sum would be equal to uh, equivalent kinetic energy here, one half mass equivalent, again, y dot squared. All right, so let's move over here using kinetic energy right to find an equivalent mass so one half what did i say a minute ago m1 y dot squared that's velocity squared for mass 2 it's going to displace by x so it's derivative its velocity is x dot squared and then one half mass equivalent y dot squared the one half is going to get cancelled and we do exactly what we did a minute ago remember here we said x is equal to half of y therefore x dot is half of y dot in other words velocity of mass 2 velocity of this mass is going to be half as much as velocity of mass 1 okay so this one was m2 sorry guys um, and this is y dot over 2 squared equal m equivalent y dot squared so you see again if you factor y dot squared you end up getting m2 over 4 because this is a 2 squared right uh, factor out y dot squared and you have m equivalent y dot squared therefore m equivalent becomes m1 plus m2 over 4 and uh, what is the natural frequency natural frequency once you have made your equivalent system is square root of k equivalent over mass equivalent so let's uh, say uh, mass one is one kilogram mass two is i don't know four kilogram therefore mass equivalent becomes actually two kilograms right one one plus four over four one uh one plus one two how about if we said k1 equal to 100 newton per meter by the way again I, i'm using metric unit even though over there I use inches. But remember, this was just a ratio, guys. I could have called it 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters, or 10 meters and 5 meters, right? So that just to told me that displacement of one spring is twice the other or half of the other. Okay, if we set K equal, a K2 equal 200 newtons per meter, this is your K equivalent. Uh, 100 plus 50, K equivalent becomes 150. Therefore, the natural frequency of this system would be square root of 150 over 2, square root of 75, which I believe becomes 8.66 radians per second. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video. As always, if you want to see more videos, you can subscribe, and uh, I'll make more videos almost every week. Thanks for watching and listening.